Right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to a new week. Uh, and uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer. So maybe any one of us can please lead in prayer. Yes, go ahead. Sir. Father, we come to the throne of grace. Lord, thank you for this day as you have given us, O Lord. Lord, as we are going to spend this time learning about your word, learning about your characteristics, O Lord, whatever we are going to learn from your word, Lord, and whatever the pastor is going to teach us, Lord, it should not be wasted, but it should be used for kingdom expansion, Lord. Lord, not our will, but your will be done as it is in heaven, Lord. We thank you for each and everything and all the students and our respected teacher. In Jesus' name we pray and we ask everything. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sid. All right. So it's been an interesting semester, right? We've been talking about the ministry of the evangelist uh, and the ministry of the teacher. And so now we'll move into the ministry of the pastor. Now, this is the most common uh I would say common calling that a lot of us have, right? Most of them, most of us uh, are called towards the pastoral calling. Um, and before we start, is there anyone here? Uh, I know that John is already, uh, you know, pastoring a church. Is there anyone else here who is, uh, you know, taken up already serving in the role of a pastor? It could be youth pastor, children's church pastor, anything, right? Uh, you're serving in the pastoral role. Uh, anyone, el anyone else here? No one else? Okay. All right. So we'll get into the pastor and we'll look at how Jesus uh, was our example of the best or the greatest pastor that can ever be. Uh, there are a lot of Bible verses and um, you know, before I begin, I want to encourage you to read the book, The Shepherd's Staff, right? Uh, it's a it's a wonderful book. And especially if you know that you're being called to be a pastor, uh, The Shepherd's Staff is a wonderful, wonderful reading. Um, I'm not sure if it's available on Amazon or Kindle, uh, but you can look it up online. Uh, it's called The Shepherd's Staff. It's an old, uh, it's an old book, but it's it's got some wonderful material on uh, you know how to lead uh, a church and you know roles and responsibilities of a pastor and uh, it's a wonderful read right so let's begin with uh, the verses mentioned here matthew chapter 26 and verse 31 go ahead any one of us can please read maybe someone else can turn to hebrews 13 20 and one more person can open to first peter 2 25 and 5 and 4 as well Yes, go ahead. Matthew 26 and 31. Any one of us can read. Matthew chapter 26, verse 31. Then Jesus told them, this very night, you will, you will all fall away on the account of me, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. Yeah, thanks, Jafina. Uh, Anyone can read Hebrews 11, sorry, 13, 20? Hebrews 13 and verse 20. Hebrews 13, verse 20. Hebrews 13, 20. Hebrews chapter 13 and verses 20. May the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant bought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep. Yeah, thank you. Let's also read 1 Peter 2 25. First Peter 2 and 25. 1 Peter 2. Uh, and 25 for you were like sheep going astray but now you have returned to the shepherd and overseer of our souls amen thank you so much Sid. so look at these three verses right in all three verses there's the mention of the shepherd and the sheep 
right? The Lord Jesus Himself saying, "I will this when the shepherd is stri uh, is struck, the sheep will go away, right?" So referring to Himself, or it, the sheep will part away into, and then in Hebrews again talking about the shepherd and the sheep, right? First Peter again uh, uh, two twenty five talking about the shepherd and the sheep. So. Um, all through the New Testament, especially, we see that you know the the word shepherd is used for the pastoral calling, right? Somebody who oversees, somebody who takes care of, right? To uh, a shepherd is somebody who uh, who takes care of his sheep, right? The Lord Jesus said, right, the good shepherd, right? So all of these are allegories. To the pastoral calling uh, that the Lord Jesus is trying to portray to the believers, right? Now, in in the in the pastoral calling, we look at what uh, the roles and responsibilities are, but let's look at the primary aspects of a pastor, right? Primary aspects, right? Uh, first one, the shepherd speaks. Now, what does it mean that the shepherd speaks? Uh, is it is it that he preaches, teaches? Uh, what what is what does it mean that a shepherd speaks? Basically, the shepherd speaks what he hears from God, right? Now, the natural uh, I'm sure we've learned this in understanding the prophetic. When we receive a prophetic word, the prophetic word is a supernatural word. That is, God is releasing that word into us. But we as human elements are using human abilities to, you know, to portray that message. Now, here's, here's very important. As a shepherd, firstly, we must be able to hear from the sheep, from the shepherd, right? from our main shepherd, from God himself. So as pastors, it's it's a it's a very 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 important aspect to hear from God and then minister to people. He speaks what he hears from God, right? Uh, and and we see that all through the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. What does the Lord do? Right? We we saw plenty of examples. He will go out early in the morning, and he begins to pray. And he seeks to do the will of God, right? Remember in the Garden of Gethsemane? It is the only time where he says, Lord, if it's possible, let this cup pass away. But let not your will, but my let not my will, but your will be done. What does it show? It just shows that as a shepherd, he's willing to align himself to God's will alignment right so so now when we look around us what is the you know what is the main aspect of a pastor is that he hears from god and speaks of what what god says to him now doesn't mean that you know i should only wait for a revelation from god's word only if god speaks to me through a dream or a prophetic word only then i will speak no we thank god for the word of god Right, and uh, we know that the word of God is God speaking to us. So, as a as a pastor, primary responsibility is to spend time in God's word, spend time in God's presence, and speak what God wants us to speak. Now, there are other responsibilities, but this is the primary number one responsibility of a pastor. Right. Secondly comes all the administration and you know all the other things. Primary, to hear from God and to release what God wants his people or his sheep to hear. Two, the shepherd knows. Now, the Lord Jesus, we see that he, he is God himself. So he knows. As, as a shepherd, he knows where to take us. Remember the uh, David writes this beautiful psalm, right? He says, uh, "You are the shepherd of my soul. I give you full control. Wherever you lead, I will follow." 
be it in a quiet pasture or by a gentle stream, you are the shepherd of my soul. So he knows. The Lord Jesus knows what is best for us. He knows what direction we are ought to take. He knows why we should take it, when we should take it, and how we should take it. Now, how do I translate that into my life if I am you know, called to be a pastor? Remember that we know that we can look to God's word. But this knowing and understanding comes over time. The more we spend time in God's presence, the more we uh, minister to people, that's when we will you know, learn to and develop this ability to minister God's word in the right way, to know how to handle people. And the Lord Jesus did that so beautifully. right? Uh, he knew how to handle people. Not everyone accepted him. Not everyone said, oh, wonderful Jesus, come. No. Right? There were challenges, there were difficulties, people accepted his message, people rejected his message. But through it all, he is all-knowing. Now, as a leader, if we are called on the pastoral calling, we know that we have certain limitations. We are not all-knowing. right? But what we can do, what we can be assured of is that God who is ministering to us, who is leading us, who has called us, He is all-knowing. And so we can come to a place by saying, God, there are certain things you know, I don't know. Teach us. Teach me how to, how to lead your people. Teach me how to you know, minister to your people. And so as a shepherd, the Lord Jesus did it in a beautiful way. Have you ever wondered why Jesus chose 12 and all, almost all 12 of them were like you know, just random people? They were not people who were highly educated. Many of them were living in sin. Many of them, you know, were just, uh, just regular people. But he knows how to choose and why to choose people. I'm, I'm sure we've heard of that saying, right? Uh, uh, you know, he does not call the uh, the Lord God does not choose the qualified, but he qualifies those who are chosen. So, some sentence like that. So he knows. Uh, and we can translate that into our life as well. Now, especially if God is calling you to be in the pastoral role, uh, it's a high, high responsibility. Right? One, now, it's not like we're putting fear into you, but it is, it's a responsibility because there are people under your care. And what you and I do will impact the body of Christ. Right, uh, and so we must know, we must learn, learn from our mistakes, and grow. Three, the shepherd leads. Now, I also want to encourage you to read this book, Spiritual Leadership, by uh, Oswald J. Sanders. I think I'm getting the name right. Oswald J. Sanders by Spiritual Leadership. Let me just put that. It's a powerful book on leadership. I could be wrong with the name of the author, uh, but I'm 90% I'm sure it's this. So Oswald J. Sanders, uh, the wonderful book, and it talks about spiritual leadership and uh, the qualities of a leader. I'm sure there's a lot of material online as well, but um, uh, as a shepherd, the Lord Jesus led his people. He was able to take these 12, train them in such a way, he led them wherever he went. They saw his ministry, they saw his life. right? And as a leader, he exemplified the qualities of leadership. right? And, and wherever he went, he, he, and when you see that when Jesus resurrected he died resurrected he went he went back to heaven you see that leadership mantle being just passed on 
right? And there was this there's a sense of leadership happening around already in the Church of Jerusalem. Now, how did it come by? As a shepherd, he led his people. He told them, do this. He encouraged them, right? He said, do this, don't do this, do this, right? And when you look at uh, Matthew, uh, uh, and there are many, many, many examples, right? The parable of parables, the kingdom parables, we saw all of that. Uh, uh, and, and we saw that, you know, how he taught his people, he led by example, right? He led the people by example. Uh, and this is very, very important, right? As, as pastors, we had to lead by example. Right? You cannot afford to tell people what to do and we ourselves don't do it right uh, so the shepherd leads and if god is called each one of us um, to be on in this role of a pastor we we can we may not have the leadership abilities okay le let me let me give you these examples right there are two things in leadership one is some people are born with leadership leadership skills they're born with it two some people you know learn it develop it and grow in it and they become good leaders there are some people who are born leaders right uh -huh. and you can you you'll recognize them right uh, this is also beautiful uh, uh uh, series by Miles Monroe uh, on leadership. Uh, I think his material, uh, the sermon series is available online as well. Uh, and I'm not sure if I've given this example, but uh, he talks about the lion uh, being the king of the jungle, right? And he talks about, you know, why the lion is the king of the jungle. Uh, it's beautiful. You must listen to it, right? And the Lord God, He identifies with the lion, and in the bird kingdom, He identifies with the eagle, which is the king of the bird kingdom, right? And He talks about what leadership is. Uh, you know, the lion knows that it's not the strongest animal, but it's born with that leadership instinct. So. So it knows, okay, I'm the leader, right? And the others are intimidated. The other animals, which are bigger and stronger, are intimidated with the lion, even though they know that they can defeat or you know kill the lion. But the lion's attitude is that of I am a leader, right? So I encourage you go and uh, listen to this uh, sermon series on leadership, Miles Monroe, right? So as a shepherd, we are to lead our people. Lead them to what? Couple of things. Uh, one, lead them to Christ likeness. Right? As a leader, the great apostle Paul, he says that my uh, to the Corinthian church, he says, I've been feeding you with milk, but now's the time you're supposed to be eating spiritual food, right? With uh, that will that will make you mature in Christ. Right, and as a leader, we need to raise up other leaders into the the image of Christ. Two, raise leaders to build God's kingdom. Right, uh, three, raise raise leaders with integrity, honor, walking in uh, the ways of God. Right, and four leaders who will continue the work of the ministry which god has called them for and there are plenty of reasons why uh, we have to raise other leaders uh, now the best thing is that the lord jesus raised up leaders he knew that even he the lord jesus being god could not fulfill a task alone right meaning he did, he didn't want to do it alone he could have done it alone but he didn't want to do it alone Right? The Lord Jesus chose people to work alongside with him, and he raised up these leaders for the work of the ministry. Right? 
And so first one was the shepherd speaks. He speaks of what he hears from God. He ministers to his people. Two, the shepherd knows. And three, the shepherd leads. Right. So leadership is, is something that we must develop uh, for the upcoming generation. You know, uh, there's many, many uh, books that I've read, and uh, you know, I was reading this book on uh, on church and church growth, and how there was this one church in in the West. This happened in the West uh, uh, that you know it it started off really well. They had a good church. They had about thousand odd people uh, within a quick uh, number of uh, years. They had thousand odd people but the problem was they were not able to raise up leaders right and and because of that the work just stagnated right it, it just remained on that there was no expansion there was no growth and not i'm not talking only about numbers but i'm also talking about uh, the ministry as such right uh, reaching out to different audiences and different uh, levels and different mountains around us the seven spheres of influence it wasn't they weren't able to do that and then uh, the article says how uh, you know the pastoral team um, were you know looking at this whole thing and they realized that the whole problem was because they put the whole matter on themselves rather than raising up leaders for the next generation right and so thankfully god used them now you know uh, convicted them corrected them and they were able to uh, raise up other leaders right so the shepherd leads he leads us and we as shepherds uh, of god's kingdom are to lead other people are raising up other leaders as well for the shepherd sacrifices for the sheep uh, uh, and the word sacrifice is used all through the Old Testament into the New Testament, right? The shepherd sacrifices for his sheep. There will be times, now the word sacrifice does not mean only in, in a material way or a physical way. It also uh, relates to the spiritual aspect, right? Uh, the The shepherd is willing to let go of certain responsibilities or certain rights that he has for the sake of the shepherd for the sheep sorry now the best example is in first corinthians i think it's first corinthians nine. yeah first corinthians nine right so paul is giving this uh, whole list Right, to the Corinthian church, and he's saying, okay, now I have, because they were talking about his apostleship, they were questioning his apostleship, and um, an apostle Paul answers that. He says to them, listen, I came into Corinth, I started the church, right? I birthed you into the ministry, into God's kingdom, right? But as an apostle, I have certain rights. Right, because as a spiritual, if you read that whole chapter, you'll understand what he's getting at. As a, as a, as a, as a spiritual leader, as an apostle of Christ, I have certain rights because I birthed you into Christ. Right, I can ask for, you know, uh, material needs. I can ask for, uh, uh, you know, uh, other f financial aid. I can ask for anything. Uh, I can ask for it. Right, uh, because I have a right. But you see, I did not do that. I did not use my right as an apostle just so that you can see from my life the sacrifices that I'm making. And he goes on to say, even now, I work with my own hands, providing for my own needs. Yet I still do sacrifice for the, you know, the, the, he writes down the perils and the difficulties he went through. All of these difficulties I went through, it's not because I've become, you know, I want people to know me. I, he gives that whole list. No, I was shipwrecked. I was beaten. I was, uh, I was, I was uh, hit with, beaten with rods and put into prison. I've stayed without food. He says all of that was not so that, 
you know, I become famous or just so that, you know, people will get to know me. No, it was a sacrifice for each one of you for the sake of the gospel. Now, as pastors and as ministers of God who are leading a congregation, there will need to be a certain amount of sacrifice. It has to be there. Right now, why is sacrifice needed? Only then, when there is a sacrifice, we can see the commitment that we have to God's people. It could be sacrifice of, you know, sleep, sacrificing of, you know, spending time with, uh, you know, uh, in holidays, especially you know, Christmas time. Uh, this is relating to all of us during the time that we are in now. Christmas time, we won't, everyone are enjoying. We'll be out there, you know, probably uh, doing some outreach. Of course, it's fun. It's good. We enjoy it. We like to do it. But it's also a sacrifice, right? Uh, we'll have to sacrifice others for others' time. We have to sacrifice our time. We have to sacrifice uh, for people, be available for people. And it's part of the ministry. It's part of being a pastor, right? And some of the things that you know, initially I thought, you know, pastor is nice. You become a pastor, go on Sunday, preach, and come back home. But it's far, far from the truth. Uh, really, it's a it's a place of just a lot of sacrifices. You have to be willing to take those sacrifices. Um, you know, the Lord Jesus Himself, He did so much. He sacrificed. Uh, he sacrificed so much of, uh, you know, He could have just sat and done nothing. And then, then when He was that 32 or 33, He could have just started, done a small ministry, and then got, you know, uh, got crucified, and everything would have been okay. But there was a lot of sacrifice. Uh, the pastoral calling calls for that. Right. It, I remember I was I was preparing a couple of documents and uh, it was just not coming through. Right. It was just not coming through. The material didn't look good. It didn't sound good. Now I knew that I have to do something that is really good material because it's not about just doing something, but it's about seeing whether it's going to benefit the sheep, benefit the congregation. Right. So the moment I do something just for my sake, OK, I've done it as a task, uh, you know, I may not be able to, there may not be a sacrifice involved there. I, I love what David says. We bring a sacrifice of praise unto the house of the Lord. Right? What, is, what is it when we praise God? Why is it a sacrifice? Because even when our weakest saddest moments when we praise god it's a sacrifice unto god right so as believers as ministers of god we must be willing to sacrifice it could be you'll have to ride 30 kilometers to just visit two people you'll have to do it of course in your own time in your own schedule if it's if it involves traveling to another place and meeting a, a person, as far as we can, we do it because it's sacrifice. Right? In terms of serving in the church, do it because it's a sacrifice unto God. Right? And and so we must, especially in a generation that we are in, uh, where things are, you know, I would say. Uh, Everything is easy, right? It's easy right now, you know. Nowadays, when you look at it, it's easy to start a church. Just start a church. People will come. Right? Just do a couple of ministries, start a Bible study. It'll, people will come, right? God will build His church. That's true. But the the onus or the 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 whole aspect of being fruitful in the ministry depends on us. 
how much are we willing to sacrifice right uh, now i want to be careful uh, by saying this also many a times pastors have sacrificed too much in the sense that they have you know they've not spent enough time with family they've not spent enough time with their children and it turned out negative on them right uh, i know of many many pastors children who have uh, you know i've asked them hey your dad has been a pastor for 30 years why is it that you what made you go away from god why is it that you don't believe in god and um, you know you grew up in the church led in the children's church and nine out of ten times the answer is my dad was not there for me or my mom dad and mom were not there for me they would leave me and they would go for their bible studies and uh, house visits and all of that and they were not there so all i could see was they were looking after all other things other than me so when it comes to sacrifices we must make sure that we are sacrificing the right thing for the right people so there can also be times you'll have to sacrifice things in the ministry for your family right it's okay to do that the lord jesus he sacrificed right what did he do there was the harvest was plenty he said the harvest is plenty laborers are few but he didn't go and say okay we'll go everywhere no jesus said you know you're all uh, tired now let's take a break let's go let's go into the mountainside let's just spend time together 12 of us 12 13 of us just just being with the disciples right why because there was he wanted to spend time with them the relationship and and so it's so beautiful everything that the lord jesus did there was a reason for it right so especially when we get into this pastoral role it's good right when we are able to sacrifice but we must also be aware because the enemy can use that as a tactic to you know bring destruction in the family i know of another very good friend of mine uh, it's very sad for me to tell the story um, his father is a pastor and they have a house and right next to the house they have a small uh, i think it was about a 70 80 seater hall uh, which they have built and uh, you know their father went through very difficult times growing up and he would you know go on his cycle and give out tracks in villages and towns and uh, you know wherever there was a need he would go uh, and he did a very very wonderful ministry but growing up this boy he happened to come he he was part of our church not not abc but when i was growing up in another church and we were good friends Right. So he'll, he'll, he would come to church. He would be there for every event and programs. He would serve in the church. But he would always tell me, you know, if we, we, he was, you know, into bad habits and all of that. But I would always try to wonder, you know, why, why is this? Uh, I mean, see, I'm not a pastor's son, so it's okay, right? But he's a pastor's son. Why, what's making him do this when he knows? It? Uh, and the more I got to know him, the more I got to know that there's an emptiness in his heart it's a loneliness right because their parents were very very good in ministry right they were very good in youth ministry especially right talking to drug addicts people going through suicidal tendencies people going through oppression depression and all of these uh you know counseling kind of cases so they were very good at it and right? very fruitful in the ministry but this this my friend young man young boy he he just turned and up to now he just does not like he loves his parents he's the only son he loves he loves his parents but he does not like anything to do with church right he doesn't like it and uh, his father and mother are feeling very sad very upset and so i remember one day just talking in front of them and uh, you know my friend asked front of his parents and i was there he said how many times have we gone out on a vacation he asked his parents now he's about 23 years old 23 24 this happened quite a few years back he asked his parents front of me how many times have you taken me 
out revocation the answer was almost it was zero I've never taken them out and the only time they had gone out was probably uh, in one of those youth camps or church camp they had gone out that is the only time so he said you y'all didn't spend time with me and he was open about it he was not right? and it was a very sad situation right now you can't go back and undo things and this pastor served god faithfully yet you know he's he's been so sad right now sacrifices must be done in the right way with you know keeping in mind what is priority right four oh that's five the shepherd cares and protects the sheep uh, and we see that beautifully exemplified in the lost sheep parable of the lost sheep right he cares and he protects the sheep the shepherd leaves the 99 go in a safe place he goes he finds that sheep and brings it back as a shepherd we must care and protect our people how can we care for our people now in a church you will have different people in the congregation going through different problems and when they come to you for prayer you must really be burdened you must really care for them right uh, you must say you must be willing to spend that extra time with them for example if somebody comes and says you know my son is going through suicidal tendencies now it's a serious case you need to care for them you need to be with them you need to you know minister to them and it's a very difficult season right now care is something that comes from within it's not from outside right it's not a showing care right? just i want to show that i care no it's from within it should come from within right and we must protect our sheep now especially in a time that we are living in now uh, you know there's so much of material that is available online there's so much of uh, you know different kinds of ministry so much of good teaching but even false doctrines false uh, 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 teachings that are happening around now as a pastor uh, we must be willing to uh, come to a place and where we you know protect our church folks from things that are not of God right uh, if we feel that okay this is something that is not in line with the Word of God we share it with them now another important thing don't use that uh, you know on the pulpit right now this is a problem again right now a lot of times people you know we call it advertising free advertisement talking about other you know ministries everything uh, you know what they are doing wrong what the other person doing and that's free advertisement let's not use the pulpit time uh, for all these other matters but there will be times for example Bible studies life groups uh, uh, you know where we are supposed to we are called to protect our folks protect our sheep from the works of the enemy right uh, it could be through false teachings it could be through people it could be through the uh, any kind of sickness disease we are called to pray and protect them right now we do it with care we do it with burden in our heart right and the shepherd gathers the sheep uh, this whole thing of gathering the sheep together calls for fellowship right uh, when you look at the sheep shepherd you know the sheep are all over the place and then he calls them and they all come together to the shepherd calls for get fellowship as a shepherd we are to build this whole aspect of of, of fellowship right fellowship within the church it's something that we must do right raise up leaders and build that that feeling or that the spirit of fellowship within the church and that's important right he, he gathers the sheep together 
Now, this is also within the church fellowship and also from outside. We are to we are called to bring in people from different places, uh, get them into the church, get them involved in the church and uh, let them experience uh, God in their lives. So the shepherd gathers the sheep. Let's read that Mark 6.34. Mark chapter 6 and verse 34. Yes, any one of us can read Mark 6, 34. Mark chapter 6, verse 34. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. Yeah, so thank you, Jafina. So the so it says that they were like sheep without a shepherd, right? He had compassion on them. And and we see that the Lord Jesus did all of this. And so even as we uh you know in the ministry, if we are called to be pastors, uh there are a lot more roles and responsibilities which are important, but these are some aspects that we must firstly look into. Right. Uh, let's look at the shepherd in the Old Testament. There's quite a few verses there, but let's read Jeremiah three fifteen and twenty three four. Again, just pointing to the aspect or the role of a shepherd. Jeremiah three and verse fifteen. Yes, any one of us can read. Jeremiah 3 15 then I will give you shepherd after my own heart who will lead you with knowledge and understanding yes Jeremiah 23 and verse 4 Jeremiah 23 verse 4 Jeremiah 23 and verses 4. I will place shepherds over them who will tend them and they will no longer be afraid or terrified, nor will any be missing, declares the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Sid. So it's wonderful to see this, right? Again, God's promises of uh, raising up a shepherd uh, to Jeremiah during a time when the fall of uh, you know, Babylon is going to come the fall of Israel is going to happen anytime. And he's saying, I will give you a shepherd, a shepherd who will do all of that, what we've been talking about. Uh, no longer will they be afraid, uh, but they will, you know, this is all, say, you know, pointing to Christ. Uh, but what we can do is apply it to ourselves as well. As shepherds, we are to have these attributes. All right, let's read the last one. Uh, Ezekiel 34, I know it's a whole... Uh, chapter, but let's see what it just read a couple of verses probably. Shepherds and sheep, the whole okay, it's a long, it's a long big chapter. Uh, but let me give you a gist of what is this, right? It only the whole thing is the whole chapter, the in an essence, is the shepherd is accountable to the flock. Right? The shepherd is accountable for the flock, to the flock and for the flock. So as shepherds, uh, it's a very big responsibility. We are accountable to the Lord for the flock, for the sheep that he, that he has entrusted in our hands. And the more we uh, you know, walk in integrity, walk in the word of God, uh, sacrifice, care, have compassion, uh, for our sheep, the more we'll be able to be fruitful shepherds in the kingdom of God, right? So we'll stop here. Uh, let's just close in prayer. Uh, what 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 I want to do is uh, this next class, we will not have class. You can go ahead and just read, probably if you can read spiritual leadership or Miles Monroe, just lead, read on leadership. Uh, just, uh, you know, just continue to, uh, you know, gather more information and learn more. I want to apologize because I haven't been able to post the 
midterm assessment but I will do that today uh, so you can go on the stream and um, you know finish your midterm assessment as well so uh, so is that okay right uh, we'll not have the next class I will right, pick up from next week uh, uh, so just to use this next hour just to study and to learn uh, probably read anything that you would like to regarding leadership all right let's just close in prayer uh, maybe one of us can please clo close Zeli, would you like to close in prayer, please? Yes, Pastor. Thank Let's you. pray. Father, we come before your presence in the name of Jesus. We want to thank you so much for this wonderful session. We had Lord learning about the pastoral ministry. Lord, help us, Lord, as you are a good shepherd, Lord, help us to uh, uh, help us and teach us, Lord, and continue on to minister to us. Uh, we pray that, Lord, you bless our pastor and bless each one of us, Lord. We thank you, we bless you, we honor you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much. Have a great week ahead. I'll see you next week. God bless.